Hey there, I'm Brandon. This is the Dirt Church Devotional. So, me and my family just recently got back from a camping trip uh, last week. And of course, we take the motorcycles and we go ride and trail ride and have a great time. And uh, I had an opportunity to ride with my six-year-old grandson. And he brought his little bike and, and uh, we let him ride around camp quite a bit. But he wasn't satisfied riding around camp. He wanted to go on a trail ride. And so we found some trails that he could go on and and uh, my daughter and I took him and rode on those trails and you know ultimately he did fantastic he did really good but for a while it was kind of frustrating it seemed like every 50 or 60 yards he would crash and then we were nervous that he crashed we were afraid that he was you know either hurt or frustrated or whatever we'd run up there and pick him up or pick the bike up dust him off, make sure he was okay, ask him if he wanted to go. And he kept saying, yeah, he wanted to get back on. And yeah, he wanted to ride. And he wasn't ready to quit. And he wanted to ride. He wanted to go more. And uh, so we encouraged him. And we told him he was doing really good. And there's a couple of things as this was going on, a couple of things that, that struck me as I thought about it. And things that I think are really important for us as believers and for the church to grab hold of. Number one he didn't want to, he wasn't satisfied with riding around camp. He didn't want to just sit there and do circles in an easy to play space, in a safe space. He wanted to get out where the big guys are riding. And you know, it, it would have been so much easier for us to just let him ride in camp because we could just sit there in our easy chairs and, and watch him. We could sit there and play games and watch him and, and be fine with it. And there was no real danger for him. And we're like that in the church a lot of times. People, new believers, they, they get excited and they want to jump in and start doing what the big guys are doing. They want to jump in and, and start helping. And, and too many times we're satisfied to just put them over in the corner and, and let them play because it's easier for us that way. But, you know, Jesus said that we're supposed to make disciples. And making disciples is active. And it means it's going to cost us time and it's going to cost us energy. In fact, I'm reminded that shepherds, which pastors are shepherds, that's what the word means. Anyway, shepherds smell like sheep. That means we got to be with them. We got to hang out with them. We got to work with them. As easy as it might be just to put them off in a corner and let them, let them play in the gym or let them play, you know, just doing little things around the church. We need to be in there helping them to do better, helping them to grow, helping them to, to become disciples who make disciples. And I think every believer's goal is to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. But we're only going to hear that when we're obedient in the little things like making other disciples and not just sitting back and letting other people do it. Here's the other thing, though. Every time that he crashed, we were quick to pick him up, pick the bike up, and tell him how good he was doing, encourage him that he was doing great. We didn't focus on the failure. We didn't focus on the crash. We focused on the success and how well he was doing. What if we did that in church? What if we did that with other Christians, other believers, new believers? When instead of focusing on their failures and casting them aside real quick, we focused on their success. We focused on how well they were doing so far. You know, the Bible says that though a righteous man falls seven times, he gets back up. There's a couple things about that. A, the righteous will fall. But understand, who are the righteous? It's not us because of our good deeds or our wisdom or time and service. It's those who have surrendered themselves to Jesus. It's his righteousness that makes us righteous, not our own. And the second thing, they get back up. And sometimes they need help getting back up. And it's a lot easier to get somebody back up and to encourage them and push them forward if we focus on the success that they're having than on the failure that they committed. All right, so my grandson, he's not a crasher. He's a rider that crashes sometimes. In fact, truth be told, I'm the same way. But I'm not a crasher. I'm a rider that happens to crash sometimes. Chew on that. We'll talk to you next time.